Awesome. Welcome everybody once again. Um, thank you all for joining in uh, for this praise and worship course. Um, I hope you've been um, learning uh, something uh, during the course of this journey uh, so far. Uh, can I uh, request one of us to just uh, start us off with a word of prayer this time, please? Anyone? Yes, Jeffina, go ahead, please. Thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful morning and for the beautiful section that we are about to attend. God, we ask the Holy Spirit and Jesus to guide us as we are learning a lot of things. Help us to understand it. You need to give us an understanding spirit as the pastor teaches. Help us to open our heart and open our mind and understand it. Everything that we are learning that is fix everything in our heart and apply it in our life and lead a successful and enjoyable life in you. We will live for you each and every second of this life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jeffina. All right. Um, so let's just uh, continue with where we left off. We started off with chapter 5 in your notes, page 18, chapter 5. Um on this chapter, we started off on our journey of understanding what is worship, uh, just to start diving in a little bit more deeper into the subject and the topic of worship, right? Um, and uh, one of the definitions that's mentioned up there in page 18 in your notes is, uh, it says real worship defies definition. It is the communion with God experienced by his loved ones. True worship is bowing our hearts and lives before the Lord and acknowledging his supreme lordship, even in negative circumstances or complete emotional turmoil. Um, as we, you know, as I keep saying this time and time again, I mean, and I, I, uh, I'm sorry to sound very repetitive or redundant. Uh, um, some of these words don't just treat them as just words, uh, but engage with them. Uh, you know, let it minister to you. Uh, you know, it's small things like true worship is bowing our hearts and lives before the Lord and acknowledging his supreme lordship. And, uh, you know, we just need to pause because uh, we are talking about uh, an eternal being, an everlasting father, uh, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And just ask yourself, what does it really mean to you to bow your heart and your life and acknowledge his supreme lordship? What does it mean to you? Uh, you know, are these just words that give certain definition or an explanation to worship? Is that it? Uh, you know, ask yourself, what more, uh, you know, can we do with those words? Okay, so having said that, uh, we cover two points from this chapter. Uh, the first point on what is worship, we saw that worship is the recognition of who God is. Seems like it starts at that point, isn't it? Worship is the recognition, recognizing, okay? Two things happen in the process of recognition. This is just a quick recap. Uh, we identify and acknowledge, right? We identify and we acknowledge. Um, so we identify from having met or encountered before, and we acknowledge, uh, that is, accept and admit to be true. Uh, you, we saw multiple, uh, you know, points on the importance of recognizing who God is. And uh, one of the chapters that we read through was John chapter 21. Um, how many of us remember that? John chapter 21, uh, you know, when Peter and disciples, they go fishing uh, one night, they try catching fish all night and they don't. Uh, then Jesus is by the seashore and he says, cast the net on the other side. Uh, they don't, they still don't recognize Jesus and his voice until it, John gives a nudge to Peter and says, like, hey, Peter, that's the teacher. Uh, you know, and uh, this is just to pause and see that John 
could recognize Jesus because he was a worshiper. Um, a worshiper will always recognize the presence of God. A worshiper will always recognize the presence um, of God. Um, okay. Um, so the next thing we saw was worship is reverence for God. Uh, to rever is to regard or treat with adoration and utmost fearful respect. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Lord is a father. He calls us his friend. He is also the soon and coming king of kings and the Lord of lords whose eyes are like flames of fire and his feet like fine brass. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so those are the two points that we, uh, you know, that we kind of concluded with uh, in the last section in the last class. Okay, um, but it might be a little too early to ask a question or insights. But uh, are there anything else that kind of stood out to you from those two points, or something that you want to add to those two points? As in, when it comes to recognition of who God is or reverence. Um, do you think it's important? Uh, do you do you think it's important to recognize uh, who God is, and do you think it's important to be uh, to revel in His presence? Simple question. It's not tricky. Yes, very much. Yes, and very much. Okay, so that's like double confirmation. So, uh, uh, can I ask why, John? <laughs> A great big God has given us that privilege to worship him and when we come to him we find ourselves being redeemed to worship him is such a great honor and I think for that at least we should be grateful to, yeah. to give him that most respect that we can yeah awesome awesome. thanks thank you for sharing yeah. uh, Sikidnu I saw you raised your hand you want to share something Yes, Pastor. You said na, like we should recognize God. Actually, I was thinking when we know a cost of a something that it is very expensive, then only we will value it. If we know the, the or actual recognition of the God, then only the human nature we see, like we will give God the respect, the honor he should be worthy of. That's what I was I wanted to add. An interesting thought, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> Uh, where our treasure is, there our heart will be, shares uh, Divya. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, something happens when we recognize uh, just the worldly materials, isn't even, isn't it? I mean, um, uh, for example, uh, when when we look at a, a supercar in just a main road somewhere, if, you know, everybody recognizes a Ferrari and they don't just say, it's like, oh, it's just a Ferrari, you know. <laughs> it's not the reaction that you would get when you see a Maruti 800 or something. I mean, thank God for all those cars. <laughs> but but the, a, a response to the recognition of a car like Ferrari, for example, or any other supercar, it, or whatever it is, you know, is very different, isn't it? Um, so something happens, it triggers something, uh, you know, uh, when we recognize who God is, when we recognize his presence, something needs to shift. Something shifts as well, right? Um, anybody else would want to share the importance of recognizing his presence uh, and giving reverence? Okay. All right, then uh, we will move on. Okay, from the second point, we move on to the third point, which is uh, worship. It is communion with God. Okay, communion with God. Okay, communion is, is not a result of cosmetic. It is a result of intimacy with him. It is, it's a, it is a result of intimate relationship with God. Communion is the sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and innermost feelings. Okay, I want to read that line one more time just so we all ab absorb it. Communion is the sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts. Okay, look at those words. Exchanging or sharing of intimate thoughts and innermost 
feelings. Okay. Uh, some of you might have heard me say this, but the word intimacy, or intimacy, if you break it down, it simply means into me you see because I show you. Right? Intimacy simply, if you break it down, it simply means into me you see because I show you. I share an intimate relationship with my wife or with my best friend or whoever it is uh, because I trust them and I open up my heart to that individual and they get to see into me and I into them. And so when I say that we develop communion is just building an intimate relationship with the Lord is that he opens up his heart to you and you open up your heart to him. And that's just being transparent, isn't it? Um, so that is the third point of worship. Worship is going beyond the surface and getting real with God. No masks, no veil, um, no fakeness. You cannot hide. Uh, you're just absolutely vulnerable before him. No hiding. You know, you, you, you just know there's no pretending anymore in his presence. Um, that's what the that Hebrew word shaha means, isn't it? It's like it's a place where you cannot defend yourself. It, there's nothing you can do. You know, you are exposed completely. And, and that is the kind of place that we are getting invited to. They're like, hey, come to a place, uh, you know, without covering yourself without masks or with, don't try to be something else or someone else let's have an intimate relationship i want to see into you and you into me right that is communion it's a sharing it's an exchange it's not a one-way traffic isn't it um it also says in the notes sharing intimate thoughts and feelings requires a close relationship right not everybody here here knows uh <laughs> Uh, the deepest and the the darkest secrets of each 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 other, and I'm sure what how many of us? So there are 19 individuals, including me. I think we we don't know the deepest and the darkest secrets of each other, isn't it? We know each other by names and where we come from to a certain extent, but uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so you we cannot say that you you know we really have an intimate relationship. Um, right, but the story would be different if I were to meet your best friend, or if I would just spend time with you. You know, over the years, spend time with you, knowing you, knowing what you like, knowing what makes you angry, knowing what's your favorite color, knowing what's your favorite number, your favorite cuisine, etc., uh, etc., et and the list can go on. Right. Um, so when we get to know each other in that level we start developing this close relationship. And that's the kind of relationship, you know, you, uh, we share with our best friend, with our family, with our spouse, et cetera, et cetera, right? So uh, the third point is worship. It is a communion with God. And you can, uh, you can lead all the worship you want to lead in church, wherever or whatever it is, uh, preach, teach uh, on the subject of worship or whatever. Uh, but God knows that if you share an intimate relationship with him, and you know it. Um, there's this one statement that my friend made, uh, I will never forget. I'm, I'm, again, once again, please forgive me if I mentioned this before. Um, uh, he said, um, with intimacy, God will use you. And without intimacy, you will be using God. Uh, he shared this in 2011, and it's 10 years later, and it's uh, it uh, still amazes me, motivates me, encourages me uh, to develop uh, an intimate relationship with the Lord. Okay, uh, he says, you know, with intimacy, Roshan, uh, God will use you. He will use you to do great things for his kingdom, uh, you know, th through you, uh, touch many lives and whatnot. 
but without intimacy i will be using him how so i had to think about it is like okay without let's just take a week okay monday to saturday i have not read the bible i have not spent time in prayer i have not really you know i I've, i've been doing things that i shouldn't be doing i've been watching things that i shouldn't be watching saying things that i shouldn't say etc etc and uh, but saturday this is worship team practice i just you know put a song list together five songs just put it together uh and uh, go lead worship on a sunday um god will still sh- will still show up god will show up on a sunday morning not because of what i did during the week not because i shared an intimate relationship with him but he will show up because he is good and he loves the people and so everybody will think is like oh roshan is leading oh what an anointing powerful time amazing it's like thank you for leading in worship today it was such a blessed time thank you for choosing this song but in all reality i know god knows that i did not really have an intimate relationship with him through the week what happened i used him um and i don't think um i don't i don't i don't need to say that it's it's not the right thing to do right using someone uh, for their goodness using someone for their, just their skill and then you know forget about them uh you know you don't want to feel used like have you ever been in a place where you felt used and not not really cared about yes no maybe <laughs> yeah okay one person all right <laughs> it's not a very pleasant place to be in isn't it to feel used of okay you know they just want to use me for my uh you know and they just don't really care from about my well being and and what not uh and i think god is also emotional that way as in uh and he's just so good and he's just so gracious and he's just so merciful that even though there has been multiple times where i have used him he never gave up on me right uh, he he would always pursue um he he will always chase me down with his love uh you know it's like a gravity that there is no escaping um i'm reminded of the song is is one song that has his lines uh, he loves like a lion fierce like no other he violently chased me down to embrace me and uh you know and so from those dark days where there has been times where i have used god um to make me look good and that's also exactly i'm also reminded of this bible passage of saul and samuel when so- samuel confronts saul saying you have disobeyed the lord you have and he is displeased with you the response of saul is fascinating he says okay just walk walk with me uh, to you know so that the people still know that the lord is with me <laughs> uh, and oh it's easy for us to just read the passage and like oh saul was such a bad guy look at him such a hypocrite you know but i have been saul in my life so many times like okay lord when i'm leading worship you know just come and do something uh, that the people will know that you know you are still with me and i'm still anointed ah uh, i i you with me guys i i i that is not communion with the lord that is not worship that is not sharing an intimate relationship with the lord um but worship that is birthed out of this intimate relationship with him is something else it is just an overflow of of this well that wants to explode that wants to erupt in praise um right so that is that is the third point uh is it is 
communion with the lord okay intimacy is not a result of cosmetics okay you cannot think jesus did not die on the cross so that we can have a dress code and tell each other that we are intimate with the lord okay white and white doesn't mean you're intimate with the lord it's not a, it's not the result of holiness uh, you know holiness is a result of communion with the lord it's a result of 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 intimate relationship with jesus okay uh, and we will be looking at this scripture that is mentioned in the notes from John chapter 4, verse 24, that God is spirit and those who worship him in spirit and in truth. We will be looking at, at that verse in just more detail in the next section to come. All right. Yeah, uh, everybody good so far? Okay. So uh, just pause and wherever you are and ask yourself this question. Uh, how, is your, uh, how is your relationship with the Lord? Is it intimate? Um, is there something more you can do uh, to develop, uh, to, you know, to go into another, um, to another level, to deeper levels, to deeper depths of intimacy uh, with him? Okay, or or is ministry keeping you too busy? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll leave that point right there and move on. Um, the fourth point now. Worship is our response to an encounter with the Lord. Worship is our response to an encounter with the Lord. Okay, uh, can I request uh, someone to read the scripture that's mentioned in the notes? That's Revelation chapter 1, 12 to 17. Just read it from the notes. Uh, anybody, please? Can I read? Yes, please. Revelation chapter 1, verse 12 to 17. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about uh, the chest with a gold uh, golden uh, band his beard and hair were uh, white like wool as white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire his feet were like fine brass as as if uh, refined in a furnace and his voice as a sound of many waters he he had in his ha right hand seven stars out of his mouth when the shaft two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his uh, feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Okay. Thank you, Priya. Okay, um, so this is an awesome uh, response here by John, isn't it, to his encounter with the Lord. Um, okay, so this point, again, re reinstates that worship is our response to an encounter with God. Okay, so John is having this incredible encounter in the island of Patmos. He's over 90 years of age, um, and then he's having this encounter. He's like... This is not the Jesus I remember from the time I walked with him, uh, you know, on whom I could lay my, uh, and rest my head on. And when he sees this Jesus in all his glory, uh, you know, his response is, when I saw him, verse 17, I fell at his feet as dead. Remember that verse Shaha is a place where you cannot defend yourself. There is no hiding. You are completely exposed. And that's the place John was in. It was his, And his response was fell down, face down in worship before him. Okay. Uh, can I request somebody else to read uh, the next section of scripture, please? Revelation chapter 4, um, 
actually uh, can i request someone to read revelation chapter 4 verse 6 to 11 if you don't mind please revelation 4 6 to 11 someone please Revelation chapter 4, verses 6 to 11. Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes, in front and in black. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had a six wings and was covered with eyes all around. Even under his wings, day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives Forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. You, For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Thank you, Sikin. Appreciate it. Um, so one of the key things that happens in, a, in an encounter is uh, there is a revelation that is taking place. Okay. Um, probably in the next hour, I, I'll just take us through uh, a deeper study of encounter. Um, I was not sure if I wanted to do that or not, but then I'm thinking we'll do that. Um, but just coming back to this verse, right, with this, uh, this scripture, um, there is a revelation that is happening uh, in, a, in our encounter with the Lord, right? Um, that's, that's, that's what happened in, in chapter 1 with John, is that he is having this revelation of Jesus Christ, that is the encounter, and then the response is fall down in worship. And similarly here in Revelation 4 is that, uh, you know, all of heaven... Uh, it seems to be having a, this amazing encounter with the Lord, uh, and uh, their response is in worship. They are crying out, "Holy, holy, holy!" The living creatures, full of eyes, and the twenty-four elders casting their royal crowns down and, and fall down in worship. Right? Um, when we look at the living creatures, that says they are covered with eyes, inside out. You know, it's one thing to know that. Okay, these creatures are, it's hard to imagine, that's one thing, but it could, it, it also means that, you know, full of eyes just simply speaks of unlimited perspective, unlimited perspective, unlimited revelation from every side, from every angle, there is this constant revelation of who this God is. Okay, there is no angle that they could turn to and not have a revelation of this God. Okay? And, and they cried out day and night without rest simply means that there was ongoing revelation. Okay? Now, if in every angle you get to see him, and again, this is God we are talking about, the Alpha, the Omega, the eternal being, Okay, the eternal being, the great I am. And so these creatures are having this unlimited perspective of this God, which leads to un, you know, just ongoing revelation, and then in the, which is the result of just ongoing worship, day and night, you know, like Psalm 19 says, they pour forth speech, the heavenly hosts. Okay, uh, I wanted to uh, share this scripture, Psalm one twenty. Sorry, I, I, I put it in the chat for us. This is these two verses are from Psalm 145. Psalm 145. This is the amplified version, uh, amplified classic version. 
okay? So there's just the amplified version, then there's the amplified classic edition, okay? So um, these two verses are from uh, Psalm 145, it's two and three. It says, every day with its new reasons, will I bless you, affectionately and gratefully praise you. Mm. Can I read that one more time? Okay, it's in the chat section, just in case uh, you're not sure, okay? Every day, with its new reasons, will I bless you, affectionately and gratefully praise you. Yes, I will praise your name forever. Verse 3, great is the Lord and highly to be praised. And his greatness, okay, pay attention, and his greatness is so vast and deep as to be unsearchable. Okay, unsearchable. So what does it mean? You know, what is, uh, why this scripture? So every day with its new reasons, Okay, speaks of fresh revelation. What's new reasons? Every day there's a new reason. Simply means there's a new revelation of who this God is. And so you're going to break forth in praise and in worship. You're going to affectionately and gratefully praise. Right? And then you see this word there in, this, in verse 3. Great is the Lord and high, highly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. It simply speaks of, you cannot exhaust the revelation of his greatness. Like, there is no end. Right? You can keep searching and keep searching and keep searching. You will find something and then you will find something else. And then you will keep finding and then you will keep finding. Like, there is no end where you can say, it's like, okay, I have arrived. I know everything about the greatness of the Lord. Just when you think you've arrived at that point, then there's like, you know, hey, there's more to me. There's more to me. And there's more to me. Right? Uh, you know, one of, one of the key things in, our, you know, in the walk of our Christian life uh, for this continuous revelation of his greatness, of who this God is, uh, one of the key things that that kind of keeps pushing us to the next level is obedience. Um, you know, first time Moses has this encounter with the Lord. Right? He's about 80 years old. He has his first encounter. You and I know is a burning bush, right? At that encounter, you know, he, again, he encounters and God says, remove your sandals for you are standing on holy ground. Encounter, revelation, Worship, he falls down, face down. But at every encounter, there's a mandate. And Moses gets this mandate, you know, so to go and go back to Egypt, uh, bring back the Israelites. Okay. Moses, I'm, you know, Moses must be thinking, okay, you know, I'm going back to Egypt. And, uh, and then when he comes back to the place where he first encountered God, now, it's not just a burning bush. The whole mountain is on fire. Okay, you know, it's like, okay, first time he must have, when he encountered God, he's like, okay, you know, this is awesome. He is great. The second time he comes back, the whole mountain is on fire. It's like, okay, you know, he's bigger than I thought he is. Right? So God will always show himself bigger than the first time you encountered him after every time you've obeyed him. Are, are you guys with me? Okay, so his greatness is unsearchable. It simply means that, you know, there is no end to it. You, it's, it's just not possible to exhaust his greatness. Okay, so, uh, and I want you to just remember this point on revelation. Uh, you know, we, um, we worship to the degree of our revelation. Okay, uh, you can write it down or, you know. We worship to the degree of our revelation. Psalm 47, verse 7. Okay. Psalm chapter 47, verse 7 says, For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. 
practicing praises with understanding. What leads to understanding is the revelation of who he is. Okay. Argus, are, are, are you all with me? Okay. Yes. Awesome. Uh, with uh, from that section, uh, you know, we go into the next page, page twenty, uh, which talks about worship defying definition. Okay. So, what does it really mean? So, uh, let's do. Let me just do a quick recap of the four points uh, that we started off. So, first one, worship is a recognition of who God is. Second, worship is a reverence for God. Third, it is communion with God. Fourth, worship is our response to an encounter with God. Okay, and now we go to page 20. Uh, true worshippers and spirit and truth worship. So true worshippers, spirit and truth worship. So John chapter 4, 23, 24, it says, But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Okay? Um, so in spirit, what does that mean? We worship him by the power of the Holy Spirit that abides in us. True worshipper worships from his heart and from his innermost being, from the core of his being, with everything with him, within him, not half-heartedly, not lacking in zeal. Okay, true worshipper worships from his heart by the power of the Holy Spirit that abides in us. Okay, true worship is a True worship is a spirit corresponding with God's spirit. And one of the reasons why Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit, together with the gift of speaking in tongues, is that we might be released in the greater measure in our worship. So we reread this scripture uh, in, in the last class, 1 Corinthians 14, 15, where Paul says, you know, I pray and I also pray in the spirit. I sing and I also sing in the spirit. Okay, so it is the Holy Spirit that empowers us, that enables us to worship Him, to worship God in spirit. It is His Spirit in us that cries out to God's Spirit, to Him. Okay? Seboma, uh, which is the Greek word, it means a devout religious worship, having the right form, words, uh, actions, but no heart, and therefore empty and useless in God's eye. Uh, you know, if if I worship, if if worship is not in spirit and in truth, uh, it is it is empty. Um, it just, just doesn't really mean anything. Second, you wanted to ask something, Pastor? Can you repeat that word again? Yeah, uh, it's sebomai. It's in the notes uh, in page twenty. Okay, which is a Greek word. S E B O M A I. It's uh, in the notes. It's a good one. S E B O M A I. Okay, so we worship him in the spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit that abides in us. And in truth, so Father is seeking true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And in truth, it simply means we worship him according to the revealed word of God. Okay, uh, let's quickly, uh, let's go to Psalm 119. Okay, in your Bibles, can you turn with me to Psalm 119? Let's go to one, uh, verse 169. Psalm 119, verse 169. Okay, look over there. It says, Okay, yes, you can you go ahead. You want to read uh, Psalm 169, sorry, 119, verse 169 to 172. Psalms 119, verses 169. May my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. May my supplication 
come before you deliver me according to your promise 171 may my lips overflow with praise for you teach me your decree 172 may my tongue sing of your word for all your commands are righteous thank you sikindu okay so see the progression of it okay it starts off by saying give me understanding according to your word okay that means let me have a revelation of your word may my supplications come before you deliver me according to your promise then it's taking a shift may my lips overflow with praise okay so once i have the understanding of your truth god's word is truth isn't it once i have a revelation of your word and understanding which leads to understanding then i will praise verse 172 may my tongue sing of your word for all your commands are righteous okay so we um we worship according to the revealed word of god um and as actually a side note um this psalm right psalm 119 um it's a, it's it's said that it's a love poem to god's law okay it's a love poem to god's law god's law is god's word right um many years ago my mentor asked me to do this exercise he said uh, in psalm 119 there is 176 verses and in all these 176 verses you will find these word which is a word you'll find i mean depending on the um the translation that you know that your bible is word law decrees precepts um what else law sorry law is all ways commands promise uh testimony okay um you said every verse of this psalm will have these words i mean your translation might have a different uh words but this is from niv um and all of these means just one thing god's word all of these words only point to just one word that's god's word right how can a young man live his life pure by living according to the word of god okay uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a lamp unto my path all of that all of those uh, scriptures is from this psalm so when you have the time uh, if you have the time sometime today uh, go ahead and underline all these words in your bible and uh, not just to, under, to underline sake but meditate on them okay so that is in truth we worship according to the revealed word of god okay uh, another couple of interesting thing that happens is uh let's quickly go to matthew chapter 22 okay, let's go to matthew chapter 22 okay matthew chapter 22 verse 36 i think yeah 36 i'll read from uh um verse 34 to 40 matthew 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 chapter 22 verse 34 to 40 okay it says um uh, hearing that jesus had silenced the sadducees the pharisees got together one of them an expert in the law okay expert in the law it simply means expert in the word of god expert in the law tested him with this question teacher which is the greatest commandment in the law or which is the greatest commandment in your word jesus replied in verse 37 love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it love your neighbor as yourself all the law and prophets hang on these two commandments okay um the same is repeated in um mark chapter 12 verse 28 to 31 it's also mentioned in luke chapter 10 oops 25 28 in luke it's a slightly a different context but then it's it's the same thing okay um but the point is 
you know, G- Jesus is asked, being questioned about the greatest commandment in, in his word, in the law. And Jesus' response is the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Um, and he's saying from the word, all of that points towards just one thing, that is worship. Loving the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That's revelation and understanding and with all your strength. Okay, so that is in truth uh, worship. Okay, um, John chapter 17 verse 17 says, Sanctify them by your truth, for your word is truth. Okay, uh, let's go to the next page. Page number 21. Uh, it's pretty much to conclude this section um, is... Our expression of worship could keep varying from being very formal to being more spontaneous with creative arts, dance, etc., etc. Uh, we could have huge choirs and what not. Uh, but one thing that must remain constant and unchanging in our worship is that it has to be in spirit and in truth. Okay, so when when our worship is uh, birthed of, out of spirit and in truth, we will never lose the wonder of who Jesus is. Okay? Because, um, like I mentioned, all of us, you know, who, who are in this class, praise and worship is not a new subject or a new topic to all of us. You've already been exposed to it. You've heard, I'm sure all of us have been taught on. So at least in the last 20, 25 years, the topic of praise and worship has been more famous than the topic of prayer. And it is easy for us to become over familiar and get bored. Uh, and like, you know, it's like, oh, okay, praise and worship. Okay, worship, you know, this is what it is. Yada, yada, yada. We, you know, put together some definitions. Oh, now we understand praise and worship. But when our worship is birthed in spirit and in truth, when Holy Spirit empowers us to worship him in spirit, and when we worship him according to his word, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 says, let the word of Christ rich in us dwell, you know, deeply. Uh, let us dwell in us deeply. Okay, something is happening to me. <laughs> so when those two happens, we will never lose the wonder of who this Jesus is. We will never lose the wonder and the beauty of Jesus. And so it's like this constant revelation, like Psalm 145 we saw, you know, every day with its new reason, with its new revelation, we will worship him, uh, you know, uh, affectionately, etc. Et All right. Um, we always tend to read that scripture from 20, uh, that, that's John chapter 4, verse 23 onwards. But when we look at the previous verse, John chapter 4, verse 22, okay, uh, we're not going to read that right now, but uh, it's, I've just mentioned something in the notes. Uh, in, in page 21, I realize we're uh, almost done, but this is the last section and we'll stop here. In truth, we fail to worship when we don't have a revelation of what we are singing. Okay, We fail to worship when we don't have a revelation of what we are singing. That leads to the points, ignorant worship versus intelligent worship. Ignorant worship versus intelligent worship, okay? We need to involve our minds in worship. The more we exert our minds in worship, the more meaningful our worship is likely to be. Because in verse 22, Jesus says, you Samaritans do not know. That means you do not understand. There is no revelation. You Samaritans do not know what you are worshipping. You worship what you do not comprehend. We know what we are worshipping. We worship what we have the knowledge of and understand. That's what Jesus is saying. We know what we are worshipping. If we have the knowledge of what we are worshipping, we understand what we are worshipping. Okay, so that speaks of relationship between worship and revelation, which ties back to the fourth point in what is worship. Okay, worship is a response to an encounter with God. And in that encounter, there is a revelation of who God is. 
and finally we worship him according to his word okay uh, so we'll we'll stop here apologies for going two minutes over board um, we'll take a break and then uh, we'll continue on from the next session okay have a good one